So here we can see the extended amount of time where Clay still is making contact with the court, his knee is more extended or straight, whereas Wiseman has already gone into knee flexion. That foot has already come up off the ground and he's released kind of that pivot point that causes that load to shift into the ACL. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. We're on the road again, but still wanted to bring you guys an update here now that we know that Wiseman has suffered a meniscus tear. We'll look at the play where this happened, compare it to when Clay Thompson tore his ACL, and then talk about the decisions that go into managing something like a meniscus tear. As always, if you enjoy learning about this unique side of sports, please consider subscribing to the channel and be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you learned something and let's get started. This was the play where Wiseman got hurt. Remember it was his right knee. And so as we see him coming down here from this dunk, he lands on that right leg. And as he lands, I initially was concerned about the possibility of an ACL tear because we can see how much his knee comes inward. We call that knee abduction or that dynamic knee valgus where the knee comes in. We can see that his trunk is kind of falling over that affected side, which is classic for an ACL tear. And then if we look down at his foot, he's also got this kind of pronated foot position that results in his tibia internally rotating, which is kind of a classic setup that we see for a non-contact ACL tear. We'll compare it to Clay Thompson's in a little bit to kind of get some of the similarities, but ultimately, as we then heard, he in fact had a meniscus tear. We'll look at this from a different angle, but I think part of how he escaped with just a meniscus injury was the amount of knee flexion that he had, meaning how much his knee was bent as he came down to the ground here. So now as we swing this over to the side view, watch as his right leg lands. Initially, it looks like it's pretty straight, but then as he comes down, he goes into quite a bit of knee flexion here. So what I'm talking about is how much his knee is bent as he comes down in this landing position and it ultimately comes down to the ground. So again, right here as he's down on the ground, quite a bit of knee flexion, which I think is probably what spared that ACL and led more to the meniscus tear. Looking at our biodigital anatomy tool here, of course we have two menisci. We have one on the inside of the knee and one on the outside. And the menisci is this connective tissue, kind of like cartilage, that sits in between the tibia and the femur to in part provide some cushion, some shock absorption in the knee, but primarily to expand the surface contact areas so that the load gets distributed better throughout the knee joint. So now we're looking top down and here on the inside is gonna be our medial meniscus and then it's gonna be the lateral meniscus. Now for the sake of management, there's no reason to get hung up on whether or not it was his medial or his lateral meniscus that got torn, but it does matter where the meniscus tear was and what type of meniscus tear it is. A couple of key points to look at on this view are going to be the menisci root, basically where the meniscus essentially inserts or is anchored onto the tibia. And that's going to be here at the backside and here in the front. Whenever you put load through the knee, the menisci have a tend to want to expand and kind of push outward. And so it's those root attachments that basically allow it to maintain what we call hoop stress so that the meniscus doesn't just expand outwards kind of outside of the knee joint. A tear at the meniscus root is a much more serious injury that we really do try to repair because of how it changes the entire dynamics of what the meniscus is doing in the knee joint. But if we look at a cross section of the meniscus, this is probably the simplest concept here about how we manage meniscus tears. This is gonna be the outside of the meniscus and this is gonna be the inside. And what you have to understand is that the blood supply to meniscus starts at the outer portion of it and then moves inward. So that means that the outer portion of the meniscus is more vascularized, meaning there's more potential for it to heal. We call this area the red, red zone, and then we get into this red, white zone. That's kind of a transition. And then all the way on the inside is this white, white zone. Generally speaking, meniscus tears in the red, red zone have a better potential to heal on their own than a meniscus tear here in the white zone. This also plays into whether or not we can do a meniscus repair versus a meniscectomy, where we cut out that torn piece of meniscus. That decision of repairing the meniscus versus cutting out the piece of meniscus is also what influences the recovery time. When you repair the meniscus, which is the more ideal situation to maintain as much of that shock absorbing material as you can, you're gonna have a longer recovery time period than if you go in and you basically just debreed or trim the affected piece of tissue because there you're not sewing anything up, you're not repairing anything, you're just cutting it out and then doing some light rehab. So the first factor that's gonna influence Wiseman's kind of outcome here is gonna be number one, what type of meniscus tear is it in terms of a simple tear or radial tear or bucket handle tear. There's a big whole long number of different types of tear patterns. But then more importantly, where in the meniscus is the tear? Is it at one of those root locations? Is it here in maybe the red, red zone where we can have a little bit better potential for healing? Or is it gonna be in that white zone where we don't think it's gonna heal on its own and we maybe need to think about going in and trimming that torn piece. Now I mentioned how this looked similar to when Clay Thompson tore his ACL. And to be honest, that was my first fear when I saw this play. 
But now that we have the benefit of knowing what happens here, I think there are some small little factors we can look at to understand the difference between when the meniscus is more susceptible and the ACL. Both players basically came down after a shot attempt and landed on a single limb. Both players had a similar amount of that tilt where their body was kind of leaning over the injured side. Both players exhibited this dynamic knee valgus where the knee came inward, where the foot was pronated to allow that tibia to internally rotate. And so both players just in this position had a similar appearance of what could lead to an ACL tear. But if we pay attention to what happened with Clay, Clay kind of had this firmer, harder landing with more contact time when his foot was on the ground and when his knee was in a straighter position. Compared to Wiseman, Wiseman's knee kind of buckled right away. It kind of went into this knee flexion right away as his foot kind of came off of the ground. Meniscus tears are more susceptible when the knee is flexed and bent, and an ACL tear is more likely when the knee is straight. So here we can see the extended amount of time where Clay still is making contact with the court, his knee is more extended or straight, Whereas Wiseman has already gone into knee flexion, that foot has already come up off the ground and he's released kind of that pivot point that causes that load to shift into the ACL. Let's run that through one more time and pay attention again to the amount of contact time where their foot is on the ground and how straight their legs are as they come down. So clay lands, again, both pretty similar position. That knee comes inward, there's some pronation of the foot, but clay is gonna make contact longer, his leg is gonna stay straighter, and in Wiseman's case, it's gonna go into knee flexion which can spare the ACL, but unfortunately puts the meniscus at more injury risk. Even if Wiseman doesn't require surgery, it would be optimistic to think he'll come back this season just because of where we are at the time point and how they're gonna really be careful with a rookie. If the Warriors make a deeper run in the playoffs and all he has was a debridement of the meniscus, then maybe there's some more hope, but certainly if he gets the meniscus repaired, he would be out for the season. So we'll see what the Warriors ultimately decide to do for Wiseman. I hope this video was educational. You learned something here about meniscus tears and the comparison between something like when Clay tore his ACL and when Wiseman hurt his meniscus. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.